In this video, I'm going to go over what you need to know in order to solve ACT math problems that involve complex numbers. So in the complex numbers, the square root of negative 1 is defined as i. Now normally you cannot take the square root of a negative number because you know, if you take a look at negative 25, what number multiplied by itself would give us negative 25? If I had 5 times 5, that would give me positive 25. If I had negative 5 times negative 5, that would still give me positive 25. So there's no you know, two numbers multiplied together give you negative 25. So what we do, we split this up. We have 25 and negative 1. That's going to be underneath the square root. And we do these separately. Square root of 25 is 5. And the square root of negative 1, we say is defined as i, so it becomes 5i. And a complex number consists of a real part and an imaginary part. So the real part would be the 7, and the imaginary part, the 5i. Now complex numbers come in conjugate pairs. So if I have a 3i, its pair would be negative 3i. If I have a 7 plus 5i, its conjugate would be 7 minus 5i. And if I had 5 minus 3i, its conjugate would be 5 plus 3i. Okay, so remember that these always come in conjugate pairs. So we said i is the square root of negative 1. And i squared would be square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1, which would give you just negative 1. i the third power would be i squared times i which would give you negative square root of negative 1. And i to the fourth would be the same as i squared times i squared. So negative 1 times negative 1 would give you positive 1. Now this pattern repeats down the line. So i to the fifth would be square root of negative 1. i to the sixth would be negative 1. i to the seventh would be negative square root of negative 1. And i to the 8th power would be positive 1. So it's important to know that this pattern repeats. So every 4, you would start over with the square root of negative 1. So if I had i to the 15th, to figure out what that needs to be, I'll take 15 divided by 4, because our pattern repeats every 4. That's going to give me 3 and 3 fourths or 3, remainder 3. If we look here, if I had, if it was divisible by 4, it would land right on here. But if I have a remainder of 1, it would be i to the first power. If I had a remainder of 2, it would be i to the second power. If I had a remainder of 3, it would be i to the third power. So we had a remainder of 3, so i to the 15th would be equal to negative square root of negative 1. Alright, so now we're getting to questions that you might see on the ACT exam. So here it says, what is the sum of the complex numbers 2 minus 5i and negative 5 plus 7i? So just like in algebra, you know, the real terms are like terms and the imaginary parts are like terms. So if you combine the real terms, 2 minus 5 is negative 3. If you combine the imaginary parts, negative 5i plus 7i will give you 2i. So you combine the real and imaginary parts together to get 3, negative 3, plus 2i. So that would be the sum of those two complex numbers. So this one reads, in the complex numbers where i is the square root of negative 1, i to the 35th power is equal to what? So we saw that our pattern of i's repeat every 4. So I'm going to take the 35 divided by 4. 
So it's going to give me 8 and 3 fourths. So our remainder is 3. Remember, i to first is square root of negative 1. i to second is negative 1. i to third is negative square root of negative 1. And i to fourth is positive 1. So we have a remainder of 3. So it's going to be negative square root of negative 1. So answer choice C. This one reads, in the complex numbers where i squared is negative 1, 3 minus i divided by negative 2 plus i is equal to what? So there's another rule with complex numbers. We don't want any complex numbers in the denominator of a fraction. Okay, so we got 3 minus i over negative 2 plus i. Okay, in order to get rid of the complex number in the denominator, I need to multiply by its conjugate. And remember that was negative 2 minus i, just change the sign in the middle. But whatever I multiply by on the bottom, I also need to multiply by on the top. So on the bottom, I get negative 2 times negative 2 gives me positive 4. Negative 2 times negative i gives you a positive 2i. i times negative 2 is negative 2i. And i times negative i is negative i squared. So I just did FOIL on the bottom there. On the top, do the same thing. 3 times 2. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. 3 times negative i is negative 3i. Negative i times negative 2 is positive 2i. And negative i times negative i is positive i squared. Now since i squared is equal to negative 1, we can change that. So we get negative 6 minus 3i plus 2i minus 1 over 4 plus 2i minus 2i minus negative 1. And they'll end up being plus 1. So we reduce the top, negative 6 minus 1 is negative 7, negative 3i, that should have been 2i there. So negative 3i plus 2i is negative i. Positive 2i minus 2i adds up to 0, so that goes away. So I end up with just 4 plus 1 to give me 5. Now if we look at the answer choices, we can see they split up. Uh, the imaginary part and real part into its separate pieces. So here we can do the same. We do negative 7 over 5 and negative 1 over 5i. So that's going to be the same as answer choice D. And either you can put the i next to it or the i on top. Either is fine. So this one says for i equals square root of negative 1, the quantity 1 minus 3i squared is equal to what? Okay, so when we have it squared, that just means 1 minus 3i times 1 minus 3i. We're just going to use FOIL to solve this. So 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times negative 3i is negative 3i. And negative 3i times 1 is negative 3i. And negative 3i times negative 3i is positive 9i squared. Okay, and then we bring down the 1 minus 3i minus 3i. And we said i squared is equal to negative 1, so negative 1 times 9 is going to give you negative 9. And then we combine like terms 1 plus a negative 9 is negative 8. And negative 3i minus 3i is negative 6i. So our answer is negative 8 minus 6i. Negative 8 is the real part 
and negative 6i is the imaginary part. This one says, which of the following quadratic equations has the complex number 1 plus the square root of negative 1 as a solution? Now remember, when we have 1 plus square root of negative 1, it always comes in conjugate pairs, or so its pair would be, so the other pair would be 1 minus the square root of negative 1. Now when you're building your quadratic, you would have x minus 1 plus the square root of negative 1. And x minus 1 minus the square root of negative 1 equals 0. Okay, so if we multiply this negative out, we get x minus 1 minus the square root of negative 1. And x minus 1 plus the square root of negative 1. If we multiply these out, we get x times x to give you x squared. x times negative 1 give you negative x x times the square root of negative 1 gives you x square root of negative 1. And I'll take the negative 1 times x give you negative x. Negative 1 times negative 1 gives you plus 1. And negative 1 times the square root of negative 1 gives you negative square root of negative 1. And I'll take negative square root of negative 1 times x to give you negative x square root of negative 1. Negative square root of negative 1 times negative 1 gives you a positive square root of negative 1. And then negative square root of negative 1 times square root of negative 1 gives you negative square root of negative 1 squared. And then the square root of negative 1 squared is just negative 1. So negative times negative 1 is that with a plus 1 there. So I'll just change that to plus 1. Okay, so we combine like terms. We have x squared. We have negative x, negative x, so negative 2x. The positive x square root of negative 1 and negative x square root of negative 1 those add up to 0. The negative square root of negative 1 and the positive square root of negative 1 add up to 0. And that leaves it with the 1 and plus 1, we give you plus 2. So answer choice E would be the correct one. And this one says, what is the distance in coordinate units between 3 plus 5i and negative 2 plus 7i? With complex numbers, you can graph these, where we have the real part would be on the x-axis and the imaginary on the y. So if I make my tick marks, okay, so three, three over and five up. That'd be three plus five i, negative two, so two to the left and seven up be up here and we want to know this distance between the two points okay so we can just use our distance formula so it'll be a square root of we find a difference of the x's so three minus a negative two squared plus 7 minus 5 squared. So 3 minus negative 2 is 5. So 5 squared and 7 minus 5 is 2, so 2 squared. So 5 squared is 25. 2 squared is 4. So our answer would be square root of 29. 
I hope this video helped you understand how to solve problems on ACT math exam that involve complex numbers. And remember to check out our ACT math prep playlist for more videos.